Nightfall is the defining Batman arc of the 90s, when Bane emerged from the shadows and unleashed the full fury of Batman's formidable rogues gallery against the Dark Knight, slowly and systematically taking down Batman's defenses. Bane targeted Batman himself in Batman Volume 1, Issue 497. Alone and exhausted in Wayne Manor, Batman returns home to find Bane waiting on him. With nothing left in his energy reserves, Batman wages a futile fight against his adversary that ends with Bane breaking Batman's back over his knee. Batman barely landed a single punch on his monstrous opponent, making this one of the Dark Knight's most one-sided losses in his eight decade history. For an obsessed genius, Lex Luthor sure had fun coming up with overly complicated traps to foil Superman. One such trap involved making it necessary for Superman to need a whole new suit, and then disguising himself as the man who provides it. Hey, it even comes with an anti-kryptonite belt. It says so, right there on the belt, in case there's any doubt. But unbeknownst to Superman, Lex has actually hidden a lead-wrapped lump of kryptonite in the belt, which the incredibly gullible Superman doesn't seem to notice. Word to the wise man of steel, thoroughly check out all aspects of your work clothes next time. Okay, buddy? As anybody who has watched America's Funniest Home Videos knows, one sure way to get a laugh is to show a dude getting knocked in uh, you know where. And Spider-Man learned this while fighting the villains Screwball and Jester. While Screwball live streamed the encounter, Jester took out his slingshot and uh, sparked a solid hit right between the old spider thighs. And it didn't help that this occurred when Doc Ock had taken over Spider-Man's body, or that the humiliation continued with paint-filled balloons. Peter Parker might have dealt with such humiliation a little bit better than Doc Ock. He at least kept his cool while battling Spot, a guy who was basically a human portal, and ended up punching himself in the face. Poor Spidey. So Flash was fooled by a painting during Barry Allen's first ever outing as a superhero. So I guess in theory I should cut him some slack, but like, I'm not going to. See, the deal was that the fastest man alive, once again, the Flash, was being thwarted by the slowest man alive, namely Turtle Man. Sounds fun in theory, but in truth, it was kind of painful to watch Barry unable to capture a guy because he kept like overdoing things or not noticing he was there. But the biggest humiliation came when Turtle Man fooled Flash by simply painting a silhouette of himself on a wall. Barry thought this was a real thing, and while reaching for the shadow, smashes into the wall. Very uh, wily coyote for a super speedster. So, as the the name Avengers Disassembled implies, this was a bad point in time for almost all of the Avengers, and it certainly qualifies as one of their worst defeats. The 2004-2005 crossover storyline was Brian Michael Bendis' way of revamping the Avengers into a team and state that he felt was, you know, better at the time. It featured a story that weaved between several key Avengers members and showed them at their worst. Iron Man's long-term love interest dies, so he decides to give up being the Secretary of Defense in Iron Man. Thor and the rest of the Asgardians are wiped out by a force that is supposedly the physical embodiment of Ragnarok, which they had averted numerous times before. Spider-Man, poor guy, is transformed into a spider creature loyal to the Spider Queen, Adriana. In the main Avengers storyline, they're also harmed by a mind-controlled Scarlet Witch. She summons a zombified Jack of Hearts, who explodes, a weakened Vision, who upchucks up eggs that turned into Ultron drones, and a Kree warship. Numerous heroes are killed in this conflict, including Vision, Jack of Hearts, Ant-Man, yep, Scott, and Hawkeye. On top of that, the Avengers have their security clearance revoked, and public opinion about them has fallen. So this was a bitter defeat for the Avengers. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once they confront Scarlet Witch, she sends wave after wave of artificially created constructs until Doctor Strange puts her into a coma. Not a good one all around. The humiliation from the defeat of Gorilla Grodd publicly capturing the League stems from the fact that it came about due to the League's own faults. So in this story, Gorilla sets up the Secret Society with the intention to prey on the League's weaknesses. After the members got hot-headed over how they didn't need the others, Grodd made his move by capturing each member individually. And in order to rub it in the faces of the public at large, Rod had the heroes strapped up and encased in pods for everybody to see. So not only were they handily, you know, taken out earlier, they were also made to look really, really, really stupid. It took the Martian Manhunters shapeshifting to save the League from further embarrassment by freeing them. 13 years ago, Peter Parker was on a school field trip to a science lab. There a spider got a large dose of radioactivity, dying for life, spider bit Peter on the hand. We all know this, I know we all know this, but what we don't know is something else happened too. In this case, the spider didn't die right away. Instead, it crawled on the floor, bit a young dark-haired girl near the ankle, and that's how we got Silk. 
and she is Spider Man's original sin. After being dead for a while, having Doc Ock in his body, Peter's like, hey, I'm gonna go out and fight some crime. This is Amazing Spider Man, Volume 3, Issue 1. The Menagerie, a new crime team. We've got White Rabbit, Skeen, Hippo, and new villainess, Panda Mania. They're going on a rampage, stealing very expensive eggs in an auction heist. A man nearly falls over onto a little one, but his fall is broken by Spider Man. White Rabbit starts firing at him, but Spider Man defeats her, takes the eggs back, webs them to safety. Hippo throws a car at Spidey, claiming the eggs would secure his future, but Spider Man's like, hey, we're already in the future. And then somebody else is like, hey, old Spidey's back. They realize something, and this is where the point is, folks. Outside of his mask, web shooters, and the web around his uh, nether regions, Spider Man is completely in the nude. Thankfully, he's able to keep his mask on before his identity is revealed, but his dignity didn't have the same fate. Peter defeats all four villains before being chased off by angry civilians and gets home and is like, okay, that wasn't half bad. Let's keep going, folks. In the Cadmus arc of Justice League Unlimited, Lex Luthor devised a plan to discredit Superman by running a presidential campaign and feigning an act of having reformed. Bit by bit, Superman's allies turn on him, especially after Lex causes the Justice League Watchtower's death ray to fire on Earth. The humiliating portion was during Lex's unveiling of a new city, making Superman believe he'd planted an explosive underneath. With Shazam favoring Lex, he and Superman engaged in a fight that completely leveled the city. After realizing Lex had fooled him and there was no explosive, the Justice League is discredited in the eyes of the public, and uh, the public is calling for their surrender to the government. Oops. One of the most embarrassing ways to lose to your arch nemesis would have to be doing so on your own turf. And during the Under Siege, readers got to see exactly that. The Masters of Evil have been and the antithesis of the Avengers since they premiered in the Avengers issue 6 in 1964. They were assembled by Captain America foe Baron Heinrich Zemo, who was tired of always losing to Captain America and kind of not a fan of the formation of the Avengers. Later, his son would pull together another incarnation of the Masters of Evil, made up of others who were tired of being defeated by the Avengers. This time, fueled purely by revenge, they avoided the big evil plan and just invaded Avengers Mansion while the Avengers were out. From there, things had to get worse for the Avengers before they could get better. Zemo and the Masters laid waste to the mansion and tormented Jarvis while Captain America watched. They even managed to get one over on Hercules. Within an inch of his life, using a combination of manipulation and raw power, the Avengers had to regroup and call in some backup before they were able to retake their own mansion. But for quite some time there, the Masters won. They took the Avengers home from them and trashed it while mercilessly harming several people they cared about. In Justice League issue number 69, during which the backup squad was known as Justice League International, Doom Doomsday went out to cause huge levels of destruction. After breaking free from his prison, Doomsday rampaged through the countryside and suburbs on a collision course with Metropolis. But before Superman could swoop in and save the day, the Justice League tracked the monster down and came face to face with a force the likes of which they had never battled before. On this occasion, the monster was mostly in a subdued state, with one hand even behind his back. But yet, Doomsday steamrolled through Justice League International in what was even acknowledged in the comic book itself as an embarrassing defeat. Not only did they lose, but the defeat was in such fashion that the Justice League International's name was permanently soured. And that's all for today, folks. I've been Alexa. See ya!